is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Wednesday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you have markets dramatically higher yet again in the overnight session. Chinese stocks, man, you're talking about pops of 12%. I think Baba's up like 27% this morning from a few comments from China. S&P's right now trading at 40 291 folks you're talking about 200 points down from friday to tuesday and you're talking about 200 points up from tuesday morning at five in the morning you're talking about barely 24 hours we'll call it 28 hours to be exact from 4129 you almost make it up you make it up about uh 180 points to be exact to 4311 we've given up about 20 s p points from there 4291 nasdaq 100 up 178 points how about 750 points in the nasdaq 100 Friday to Tuesday to today. Get it back, pushing this back on a 30 uh, minute, going back 10 days. I mean, you see the volatility we've had, folks. Two ways in this market, just remarkable the accelerations we've had in both directions. The Dow. How about 1,200 points just from early yesterday at 32,600? We just reached 33,800. We give up 100 points pretty quickly. We're at 33,705. You got the Russell up 1% right now as well, as well. The Russell, folks, traded up 75 points from yesterday morning. Quite a move. You got Bitcoin back above 40,000 this morning at 40,325. You jump over to crude, catching a little bit of a bid. Yesterday, 93.53 was the low. We're right near 100 bucks again at 98.81. We'll be talking to our man Teddy Kegstat coming up at 40 past the hour from forex-trading-onlock.com. We'll be talking some forex, always talk some crude oil as well uh, with Teddy. And we jump to gold. 1921 gold. Kind of been shopping around since yesterday, and we jump to the all important notes and bonds on the day. That we get a lift off, folks, not often that you get to say today is the day the Federal Reserve will begin raising rates coming out of a pandemic that they've been providing basically 0% interest rates for the better part of two years. Not even the better part. Let me take that phrase, out, that little word out of it for two years, period, end of sentence. Today's the day they lift off and the market's expecting about six to seven rate hikes right now coming into today's meeting. Uh, press conference at 2.30, they'll get the announcement at two o'clock. So announcement at two o'clock, uh, Chairman Powell, press conference at 2.30. Boy, I got some tough competition at 9 a.m. this morning because uh, not often that you get a wartime address, man, as Zelensky going to be speaking to U.S. Congress in a moment. He may be speaking right now. They were getting ready for it when I came on the air. Uh, he will be making an address to the U.S. Congress. President Biden going to be talking after that. Be interesting to see if anything comes out of those two uh, speeches. Uh, not sure you'll see any headlines uh, that may move the market too dramatically. I mean, in this one right here, you're talking about fresh bombings uh, of homes, apartment blocks, collapses of apartment blocks in the Ukrainian capital today, the same time that you see Russia potentially saying that there's maybe some room for a compromise. Uh, all the talk out there talking about a neutral Ukraine, maybe something that's up for negotiations. But nonetheless, pretty interesting, uh, as you have an address going on right now from President Zelensky over Zoom, I believe, uh, to the U.S. Congress. All right. Let's jump to some of the FANG stocks and see how we're trading this morning. You got Amazon, quite the acceleration yesterday. You're going to open about 30 bucks higher on Amazon. That's about 1% pop with the market up about 1% as well. We jump over to Google. Google shares right now, 26.27. We jump to Microsoft shares. Microsoft pushing 289. We jump to Apple shares up about $2 at 157. I mentioned some of those Chinese stocks, man. We've been talking about it yesterday and quite the pop. We'll get into this a little bit later as well. Uh, $15, you're talking about 20% from yesterday's close almost on BABA, JD.com, similar action. You spike from 45 to 57. What is that, 12 bucks? That's more than 20% on JD, let alone where you were at 40 bucks just early yesterday. Uh, I would be very hesitant though on that one, folks. 
you put this thing on even just a year can you barely find a bit on that chart? Percentages on small numbers can be deceiving. I'm gonna show you where we are back on this chart, folks. We're back to 57 bucks on JD.com. That only brings us back to where we were trading at on March 8th, eight days ago, uh, let alone the slide to 41 bucks over that time. Pretty remarkable acceleration going on in China, though, to say the least. I think, do I have those headlines up here? No, I'll have to pull up the other one that I had in terms of the exact wording of the statements that were said out there. Uh, somewhat vague, but somewhat reassuring that uh, China may be coming to the rescue for some of those capital equity markets uh, in a max pain situation. All right, jumping around to metals. The LME, yet again, <laughs> quite an embarrassing uh, set of events going on. System errors this time triggering fresh chaos as the London Metal Exchange suspends nickel trading once again. Uh, investigating a technical glitch. It's going to retry and open it as soon as possible. Trades ex executed below the lower daily price limit would be canceled. I am not a programmer, folks. I have some background in terms of experience with programming and working with programmers uh, with TFNN and, and our website, of course. But I'm not a programmer. But it seems like it should be pretty simple if you're a exchange of any sort uh, deciding the parameters of where something is able to trade. If then statements are the basis of my understanding of simple programming going back to a TI-83 calculator folks if uh, those are familiar. Uh, just embarrassing to put it very lightly. Uh, trades executed below the lower daily limits going to be canceled. Suspension of nickel trade represents another embarrassing setback. I mean, just embarrassing to say the least. I mean, that's not how you run an exchange, folks. They're going to be just having trades that go off, then they have to cancel them. The whole point of having an exchange is that they're supposed to be the ones that are running things to make sure those things aren't happening. But nonetheless, it persists uh, after quite a de debacle with nickel already. Starbucks, the CEO is retiring, and Howard Schultz, he's going to be back as interim chief. He's done this a few times, I think. Uh, so the CEO is retiring after five years on the job. Howard Schultz, he's going to return as interim CEO. Once again, taking the helm of the company, he elevated into a global brand. Uh, Starbucks hopes to find permanent successor for Johnson by this fall. The CEO shift um, falls against the backdrop of growing efforts among Starbucks employees to unionize. Jumping over to their chart. Now, I'm not sure this is exactly having to do with the CEO or just the market in general. You got Starbucks up about four bucks, so that's only half a percent. There's your acceleration from yesterday to 78 to 82. You jump up to 90 bucks potentially, you're back to 87 for Starbucks. Whoops, not to put things uh, on a weekly, quite the pullback for Starbucks, man. COVID lows of 50 bucks to 126. Took a look at this this morning. On a Fibonacci basis, right back to that 618 folks how about that right i mean what's the low here 78.92 and uh i got on my chart 79.13 so what are you talking about eight 21 cents away from that exact 618 when you go from 50 bucks to 126 you back it up to 79 dollars from there we've bounced to 87 right at the 618 for starbucks shares nike Jumping over, uh, right to the 50%. Interesting action on Nike. They got an upgrade yesterday, back on a 15 minute. Yeah, some, not too much of an acceleration yesterday, and you're popping a little bit, but Nike struggling. Stay tuned, folks. We got about 15 minutes to go until the opening bell. I'll be right back, so stay tuned. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&P futures up 39 points right now. You get the NASDAQ 100 up 187, Dow up 283. All the markets extending some of those gains from yesterday. Uh, just in the last hour, though, pulling back a bit from the pre-market highs we had. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time. Kevin Hinks, Tom White on the TD Ameritrade Network. Fast market. They break down the day's market action. They walk you through hypothetical trade setups, folks. They're talking about options. They're talking about defined risk. Boy, Kevin, I don't know where to start. We got a Fed meeting uh, wrapping up today, but that might not even the biggest be the biggest news of the session, which is remarkable as we lift off from zero interest rates from a pandemic. Good morning, Kevin. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, there's a lot going on this morning ahead of a Fed announcement and uh, his press conference. You know, Tommy, the actual announcements from the Fed won't be much of a surprise, frankly. I think he's been very clear that he's going to raise uh, the overnight Fed funds rate by a quarter of a point. I think the part that is important, the part that will drive markets the second half of the day, is his press conference and how almost like a CEO holds a conference call, he's going to give guidance to the future on what he's going to do with rates. So, yeah, there's a lot going on this morning. There's news out of China. There's news out of Starbucks. A lot of stocks higher this morning, big percentages. But the second half of this day is going to be pretty epic as well, Tommy. Yeah, I mean, it's almost uh, pretty wild. We got quite a, a competition for eyeballs right now, Kevin, of course, with President Zelensky speaking to Congress. Uh, kicks things yeah. off at 9 in the morning of all times, 30 minutes before the opening bell. Headlines coming out of that, of course. Um, and yeah, we, the China stocks, man. I was chatting with you yesterday and quite the bounce. We'll see if this bounce holds anytime soon, Kevin. Uh, Alibaba up 15 bucks, almost 20%. JD.com up more than 20% on a few words over there. Uh, and the market's pretty resurgent. 40 points in the S&Ps right now. NASDAQ 100, 192. Just from Friday, Kevin, we've had almost a 200-point move down in the S&Ps and a 200-point move back up in this market. And Wednesday trading hasn't even started yet. You mentioned Starbucks out there, uh, CEO stepping down. The chairman, uh, Schultz, going to step back in as interim CEO, as he's done a couple times. Starbucks up with the market today. Uh, of all going on in this market, Kevin, uh, you know whether it's fundamental takes out here, technical takes of where we are, we still have some companies coming up with earnings, of course. What are you guys going to be talking about on Fast Market coming up at 12 today, Kevin? 
Well, you know, Tommy, we try to stay as on topic as possible. So the first segment of today's show, Tom White and I are going to cover Alibaba and look there at we go. is it still tradable or untradable. <laughs> and then, like Folio is going to do presentation on Dollar General, and then we'll work on retail and earnings for the for the rest of the show. But we're gonna we're gonna dive right into the belly of the beast and trade Alibaba in the first segment today. But Tommy, I have a, I have a question. I have a little something for a little thought for your viewers to think about. Starbucks has three hundred and eighty three thousand employees. All right, how is it? that they have no clear succession for their CEO. And every time they have a CEO retire, which I'm sure this isn't a shock, how do they not have a clear successor in mind? And why is it that they have to do a national search and bring in their own CEO? I find that fascinating that they have so little preparation, yet the stock is higher this morning on that news. Maybe it's just the cynical trader in me, Tommy, but that doesn't sound like the best way to run a company to have no clear successor. Yeah, because he had to step back in there a while ago yeah. now again, right, to right that ship for a while. Um, when they had, what, expanded too quickly or whatever it was, he came back in as the CEO, kind of right of the ship. The stock took off again. Uh, time passes by so quickly, I forget the year it was. Uh, but you would have thought, Kevin, it's a great point because, you know, I saw the headline today and, and the first thing I thought in my mind is again, right? You know, again, oh, he's stepping back in again. He just fills the hole, I guess, anytime a CEO yeah. steps down. Um, the one saving grace maybe is that he's done such a good job, right? That the market maybe yeah. forgives the, the what you're talking about. That come on, where where's somebody else in line um, after Mr. Mr. Schultz does not want to be the CEO? Um, CEO has a lot of details, man. He's the chairman. He's done so much. Kind of tough to go back into that detail role, but yeah, interesting, man. Especially after he had to do it again, right? You'd think if you did it once, you righted the ship, you'd make sure next time around that you don't have to come save the day. But nonetheless, um, Starbucks, and man, on this chart, Starbucks, all the way back, Kevin, I got it going back on a three-year weekly right now on the Thinkorswim platform from 50 bucks at the lows to 126. We right back to the 618, Kevin, of that entire move with an almost 20 cents, uh, 79.13. I have that 618 on my chart. We had a low of 78.92. We're now trading at 87 bucks just that quick. Well, Kevin, man, we appreciate the conversation. Appreciate you taking the time to start the trading day with us uh should be a wild one to put it lightly man in the trading day and we'll be watching at 12 today with you and tom white we appreciate the time kevin always a pleasure tommy thanks for having me on you too kevin take care folks tune in every trading day uh what we have going on with this market right now is an outstanding time to be watching kevin's program fast market because you need some volatility, folks, to be a trader. And when you're trading options especially, volatility can be a trader's best friend is how the phrase goes. And man, we got volatility, as my dad would say, in spades, folks. We jump over to the VIX. I mean, talk about a sustained level in the VIX. This is a three-year weekly. We go back to the COVID highs of 85 bucks. If you take out that high, okay, I'm gonna put it back on a daily for a second. I'm gonna take out the $85 high for some context here a very sustained elevated VIX from the first to the year. And not surprising when you get the NASDAQ in bear market territory as of a couple days ago, I think we might've pulled ourselves out of there by this point. Uh, but yeah, very elevated levels where we haven't seen a VIX below 20 since almost the beginning of the year. And we haven't seen a VIX at 20 since almost February 9th. You're talking about five weeks ago, the VIX was at 20 and we accelerated higher. We've had two spikes of 3894 and 3779. We were also back up to a high of 3752. Now back to 2889 right now in that volatility index. Remarkable. S&Ps drifting a little bit higher during Zelensky's speech to Congress. We're trading at 4299. No real dramatic moves and uh, nothing too dramatic expected really um, in terms of his pleas, his expectations, we'll see the headlines as they come out. Um, he's gonna be asking for aid. He's probably gonna be asking for a no-fly zone, which is probably a non-starter right now. Um, we'll see how that goes. We'll see what President Biden has to say after that as well, if that can move markets. Interesting, all of this going on as we come into the opening bell. Not often, right, would you have this type of action at 9 a.m. Eastern time coming into the opening bell? And then you add on top of it a statement at 2 p.m., Press conference at 2.30, Kevin put it well. Statement, we could probably write the statement ourselves. Press conference, 
different story. We'll see what happens. My estimate is that everything is so out in the open right now, folks. They've kind of made their path clear as of now as the data dictates now. The data dictates now the economy is strong. The data dictates now inflation is out of control. They got to hike. They got to hike quick. And Chairman Powell has stated this economy is different from the last time they had tried to lift off, okay? This economy can handle the rate hikes as they lift off. But what he always says is, if the data changes, we will change. I think that's what you're gonna hear again. He's gonna say, you got a lot of volatility out there. You got a lot of uh, unknowns, okay? I mean, you have a war time address to Congress on the morning that the Fed is gonna lift off and start hiking for six or seven times. There's a lot of unknowns in this, and you're going to hear the chairman talk about that, I'm sure. But he's probably going to say, as of now, we will be data dependent. But you never know with the chairman, man. We'll see. There is a lot of vol volatility and unknowns. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the open. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and we got the S&Ps up about 41 points right now at 42.94. All the markets holding pretty steady from where we were coming into the open. You got Bitcoin back above 40,000 right now. We got crude up a buck 75 at 98.01. We're talking to our man Teddy Kegstack coming up at 40 past the hour during the next segment. Gold off about 10 bucks at 19.20. And we check in on notes and bonds right now. You got the 10 year. We're down three ticks. We catch a little bit of a bid right now from the lows, but you're talking about a 10 year yield right now. 
just remarkable how this market just reprices things uh, in dramatic fashion, uh, putting things back just to see the spike we had. A little bit more than a week ago, Sunday night, you're trading at 129.04. Folks, you traded down almost five full points in the 10-year over the period of about six to seven trading days. Can't overstate how big of a move that is when you look at the acceleration. And that pushed yields from a 1.6 handle, we're in the higher 1.6s, 1.687, something like that, uh, correlated the yields when we opened a week ago Sunday night. And you're now sitting at almost 2.2%. Folks, that's over half a percentage point to the 10-year uh, in the span of about six days. But guess what? It had to happen because the hikes are coming, and they're starting today, to put it lightly. All right, let's jump over to the Chinese story I was talking about. And everybody's talking about China stocks jump most since 2008 as state council vows support. The Let me get the exact. So you have the Enterprise Index. That's tracking mainland companies listed in Hong Kong up 13%. Uh, yeah, JD was up about 22%. The eye-watering rally followed a report by the official Xinhua News Agency that China will keep the stock market stable and support overseas share listing, citing a member chaired by Vice Premier uh, Liu He. The comprehensive statement also sought to resolve other woes that have plagued the market, particularly concerns over Beijing's tech crackdown, saying efforts to rectify internet platform companies should end soon. The market taking that and running with it, man. That's all it takes. And you got the market up double figures. You got some of the biggest players up there up 20 plus percent. Baba giving back some of the gains, but still up about 17% right now. JD up 21% right now from 40 bucks to 55 just over the last two trading days. Remarkable. All right, let's jump around to some of the other headlines we have going on. Uh, mortgage rates, uh, as we talk about rising yields. We got the average contract interest rate for a 30-year fixed mortgage conforming loan balance that's 647,000 bucks or less increased to 4.27% from 4.09 for loans with a 20% down payment, applications to refinance a home loan. Yeah, those would be the most sensitive. It fell 3% for the week, seasonally adjusted 49% lower than the same week a year ago. Excuse me, mortgage applications to purchase home rose just 1% for the week and were 8% lower than the same week one year ago. Retail sales out this morning as well. Softened as high gasoline costs begin to bite. Watch out. So retail sales slowed in February after a surging month earlier, suggesting that consumers are pulling back spending in some categories as inflation limits purchasing power. Not surprising, folks. Uh, that number at the gas pump. It hits us all. The value of overall retail purchasing increased 0.3% after an upwardly revised 4.9% in January. Excluding gas stations, sales fell 0.2% in February. So all of the increase coming from gas stations, if you take them out, you actually have a decrease in retail sales. Median estimate was calling for a 0.4% gain in overall retail sales. Number comes in at 03 uh, and again, ahead of the Fed decision today. Let's see what else I got pulled up here before we jump to the stops making the moves. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go down some of the equities that are moving. We talked about China. NVIDIA gets a bump. How about NVIDIA yesterday? I think NVIDIA was up 7.3% or something yesterday. These stocks, there's a move for you. From 210 yesterday early to 230 at the close. And we're trading up another 1.6% right now for NVIDIA shares. They get an upgrade, I believe it was. Uh, yeah, Wells Fargo adds it to its signature picks list. The firm anticipates upbeat announcement from NVIDIA at its upcoming investor day. And also said the recent market downdraft has helped create a favorable risk reward profile. NVIDIA was one of those that really started to stretch the echelon of multiples when it was up at 346. Uh, I mean, folks, you can see the earnings per share on this think or swim chart. It's pretty cool, right? You get the earnings and you also have their dividends, okay? So they have a, looks like they had a 16 cent dividend. Maybe they're cut to a four cent dividend uh, back here, but nonetheless, you see their earnings. Okay, their earnings, what do we got? Three bucks, three bucks, a dollar, a dollar. Add them up, that's eight bucks in earnings, okay? And you're trading at $350 per share, all right? At a PE of 10, you'd be trading at 80, right? Um, 
huge, huge multiples. I think they were even bigger than that because I'm tying in the three dollars here. If you look at forward earnings, you're talking about a dollar, a dollar, a dollar earnings multiples, man, through the roof on Nvidia at 346. Maybe getting a little bit more attractive now, uh, up 1.5 percent today. So Pfizer and BioNTech, uh, they've asked the FDA to approve a second booster dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. I believe this is just for people 65 or older or immunocompromised at this point. The decision could come in time for an autumn vaccination campaign. You have BioNTech trading higher, Pfizer barely higher with the market as well. Micron gets a double up upgrade to outperform from underperform. Uh, Bernstein said the Ukraine conflict won't result in any significant memory chip supply or demand destruction while also noting the recent sell-off again and other semiconductors creates MU, right? Yes, MU. Micron up 4.7%. You take a look at the 15 minute. I mean, you're up 12, 13% just from yesterday's low. You take a look at a little longer term time frame. Yeah, more attractive at 75 than you were at 95 just less than one month ago, almost one month ago exactly. Man, these pullbacks, these chip stocks. So Spotify, they're gonna team up with FC Barcelona, uh, stadium and sh shirt sponsorship deal. Uh, and we got some other companies out with their numbers today. Land's End is out with their numbers. They missed 10 cents versus 21 cents. Revenue fell short as well. They're down about 10% pre-market. We'll jump over to them in a moment and not familiar with Shoe Carnival. Maybe I should be. They're lower as well, despite an upbeat quarterly report, which saw it beat estimates on both the top and bottom line. Full year revenue and profit forecast range was largely but not completely above the estimate uh, and a 29% dividend increase. But guess what? SCVL, let's see. Yeah, they're up 6.2% right now. You accelerate higher, you give back some of that and land's end. Uh, look at that. They claw it all back down only 2.4%. I guess not all of it, but you were down to 1390 when that conference call began for land's end. Right now you're trading at 1536. All right, in the market, it's running, folks. It's pushing near the all-time highs. Not all-time, not even close. Uh, Pre-market highs of 43.10 about. We're back to 43.07. Putting this on a one-minute chart just to see the acceleration right out of the gate, folks. 9.30, we're trading at 42.92. S&Ps trade up 20 points on the open right now. Let's jump around to some of our stocks, see how they're trading. You got Amazon up about 7 tenths percent right now. We jump around to some of the stocks that have really gotten hurt, see how they are rebounding. Peloton had quite the day yesterday. But don't call it a comeback just yet. Give him back some of those gains, man. Peloton, you trade up yesterday. Let's put it on a five minute to get the run. You closed Monday at 20 bucks. We closed yesterday up about 10%. But guess what? Today, you're giving it back. Zoom comes to mind, up 3% today. Roku, been punished, up 5.7% today. All of those stocks catching a bid. But man, they talk about punishing uh, prices. Roku, 107. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back with our man, Teddy Kegstat. We'll be talking some crude, talking some Forex. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with a 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps now up 62 points. We just got above the pre-market highs we had trading at 43.16 right now. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. You can reach Teddy every trading day, folks, at his website, forex-trading-unlock.com. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. Teddy Kegstat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. How are you today? I'm doing well, man. So I had a few technical difficulties last week. I know you were able to chat with our man, Basil Chapman. So we haven't chatted, you and I, Teddy, in two weeks. Uh, mm -hmm. Has the market been moving in the last couple of weeks? Where are we at, man? Uh, oh, I, I kid. So. But yeah. um, where do you want to kick things off, Teddy? I know we always talk crude. It's back near 100 bucks almost. That market pretty wild lately. But uh, where do you want to kick things off this morning? Well, it's Fed Day, so let's start with the 30-year, and then we'll we'll move into crude because it all comes into play together. So perfect. Um, we, we had that nice little rally in the bond market when the Ukraine-Russian uh, conflict started a few weeks back, and when we were talking, you and I, two weeks ago, I said be be very leery of this rally. It's a corrective move for one, and we were we had that was when we had two weeks away before the Fed meeting. So yeah. now we all are anticipating a quarter point rate hike. Um, they're not going to do more than that because it's not Volcker and they're not that kind of a Fed. So um, <clears throat> the speak, I think, will be something to listen to over the next couple of weeks. But we all know what's going to come out of that. You know, they're going to say the same blah, blah they always do. And raising rates is still going to be on the table for the next six to eight months for sure. So um, I'd be very uh, leery of buying the bond market right now or the 10-year uh, note market. I would be looking to sell rallies. And uh, now today, watch out. If you're not in the market already, don't even bother until tomorrow. Seriously. you got to remember you have rollover going on, which you have, means you have futures and options expiration going on in all of the financials because they expire in March, June, September, and December. And then you have the oil expirations as well. Okay, So with that, just the mechanics of that going on, with the Fed meeting going on, you're going to have a lot of algo uh, activity. Okay, So I would say for sure, if you're not involved right now, wait a couple days and then reevaluate things okay now as far as oil you know we've had a nice little reprieve but remember that the last time you and i talked we were coming off a week that just from sunday to monday it jumped 15 dollars alone you know and now it, yeah. it shot all the way up to the 120s what 126 area so um that's you know markets come out like they go in I, you hear me say that all the time so this is just a corrective snap back you know and uh, i would be very leery trying to be a dollar or excuse me an oil bear right now you know now we are at that friction point remember how i told you this is before the ukrainian crisis that w once oil gets to that hundred to hundred ten dollar a barrel area and that was if we just grab it you know went along the normal slope um that would start to restrict people's buying decisions you know which now we know for sure we're yet we are in that you know we have this ukrainian uh, russian crisis which is going on so that's gonna i think no matter what keep oil supported you know plus you have the rotation of the refineries in the u.s so that another thing going switching from the winter to the spring crude or uh, refining process what have you is going to also cause 
a spike, you know, in uh, gas prices or at least keep them up, you know. So oil, if anyone wants to be a bear and think that we're going back to 70 or $60 anytime soon, I highly doubt that, you know. So um, plus you got to remember that we went from 60 to 126 in a very short amount of time. So that correction that we had is just that. Okay, so let's let's put this into perspective with the currencies. So as far as <clears throat> we looked at with the Japanese yen, hey, we finally got the breakout. <laughs> Ooh, I saw that getting ready for you, man. Quite the breakout and, and gold <laughs> reacting accordingly. Go for it, man. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you know, I've been long the U.S. dollar yen for months, you know, and uh Boy, it was really nice to wake up on Sunday and Monday and see the, how this uh, got a nice little rally going, you know. So I'm very happy. You know, my quarter has been completed. <laughs> you nice. Will. No, that's quite a move, man, from 115 so, to 118 in like a heartbeat, basically, yeah. Right. Now, remember, I had 117.5 as a, as a short-term target with 122 being a longer-term target. Um, do I think we're going to rock it up to 122 anytime soon? Um, I think it'll be sooner than later, but not that quick. I think you're probably going to run into a little bit of resistance over the next couple of days. We got and, and until the Fed meeting's over, nothing's going to happen with the yen. Okay. Um, after the Fed meeting, going into tomorrow and Friday's trade, we'll see. I wouldn't doubt that you see a little bit of a pullback, but I'm a buy break scenario guy right now with that market because. As long as crude is strong, okay, that's keeping that supported. As long as the interest rates are, are, are hitting their lows, the 30-year and the 10-year, plus we, if we do get the rate hike, which is expected, that should keep the pressure on the Japanese yen, meaning that the U.S. dollar yen trade is going to be a very sustainable bull for a while, okay? Now, as far as the European currencies, obviously this whole conflict is, has an issue with that. Um, we have a short-term bounce in the euro um, and also in the pound. Uh, the euro, I would be very leery of uh, that market right there. I would look to sell rallies in that and do not try and pick a bottom with that at all because we could be trading down at 107 or 106 in the euro in a heartbeat, literally. You know, um, Now, the pound <clears throat> is a totally different story. Obviously, they're supported by oil. The interest rate equation does weigh on them, but the Bank of England is also kind of on par with our Fed, in at least somewhat. So I would be expect that you're going to see them raising rates as well, um, which also will support the pound. OK, I have a short term buy signal in the pound. It was um, that happened as of yesterday's close. But <clears throat> it is a short term buy signal in a corrective uh, uh, correction is what we have right now. OK, so any upside cool. move is supposed to be viewed as a correction. But I can see it getting up to about 131.95 from the British pound US dollar, which will be critical. If this market is going to be neutral or even remotely a short-term bull, it has to cross that threshold. If it runs into resistance there, then it can possibly be back on its lows very quickly. And that pound U.S. dollar, are you pulling that area, Teddy, from kind of the lows it had back in December? Um, like one, the, just that, that area, where do you get that 131 out of curiosity, 131.95 or close to 132? Where do you pull that from? That's off the recent swing high. So if cool. you look at yesterday, if you look at today, today it said or yesterday it said a, a little bit lower low. Um, you had a bear, a bullish engulfing line, short term buy signal. Now if you look at that yes. last low, the last high was a couple sessions before that. That's where I'm getting the 131.95 at. I got it. So Perfect. That, okay. March 10th. So, I like it. Perfect. And now if we cross the 131.95, then I think 133.25 to about 133.70 would be your your blow off high, which that would be good nice. if there's going to be a, a, an extended correction. Now, remember, the dollar has been on a tear. It's very likely that after the Fed meeting, we could see a pullback in the dollar. It doesn't sure. mean the bear, it's going to be bearish, but it's good to take some profits. So that's very likely to happen. It seems like all over this market, Teddy, it'd be good to take some profits or wherever you are, right? Some of these, I mean, right. it's just you started off with the 30-year, man. I've been talking about the 10-year on my show, just saying, folks, and, and, you know, I consider myself somewhat young in the market, and that's changing, unfortunately, over time. But for what I've seen, Teddy, that move in six days, you know, mm -hmm. uh, not surprising when you think we have a Fed lifting off today for the foreseeable future, but pretty right. surprising you can go from 1.6% and change to 2.2% almost uh, over seven trading days, basically. Where right. do you see, let me put you, you know, this is the million dollar question, if okay. not even more. Uh, we got about 30 seconds here. Where do you see this 10 year maybe going over the course of the year? Obviously a lot can change, but considering mm -hmm. the Fed and, and their hiking path. Um, I would say that as, as far as a bearish continuation, um, I think that you could see the distance that we've fallen so far this year, I think is about a third of the distance we're going to fall before the end of the year. Okay. So we're only a third of the way there. 
Yeah, listen, I'm, I'm this, I, you know, I, big moves are possible, we know, with yeah. this market. Teddy, great to talk to you, man. We appreciate the you education, too. the conversation. We'll talk to you next week, man. Sounds great, Tommy. Have a good okay. day. You too, Teddy. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. we got the S&Ps up about 60 points right now. When you take a look at this chart, I'm going to activate this trend line here. Really interesting to see where we go from here. We could be approaching the upper boundary line of this channel line. I'm going to extend that to the right. You see the highs we had of 4808, January 4th. Uh, you've touched a few highs from that point to lower trend line. Again, battling the upper portion of that trend line at 43.12 right now. Bottom portion of that trend line, a little bit more difficult. Maybe it's towards the bottom that we had January 24th. Maybe a little linear regression brings it a little bit higher in terms of some of those lows we've had. Nonetheless, quite a bounce in the markets. We'll see how it reacts today. Quite a day uh, with a Fed announcement, 2 p.m. Eastern time, press conference at 2.30 with Chairman Powell. All right, jumping over to a little bit of, oh, where did I just drop this article? I dropped it somewhere in here. There we go. Perfect. I got it. Wanted to talk a little bit about streaming. I like Disney. I like Amazon. After the Major League Baseball streaming deals, the battles for the two big NFL media properties comes into focus. So the one cool thing about what they're talking about in here is that uh, Apple just made a deal with Major League Baseball uh, that I, they say around $600 million for a seven-year agreement. Interesting thing here is 
they get to show games on Friday nights. They're going to stream them. They're going to have a pregame in there as well uh, and postgame shows. It's going to be free from local broadcast restrictions, and it's not going to require an Apple TV Plus subscription. They're just going to push it out to everybody to make Apple a, a more attractive ecosystem. Maybe eventually they put it behind Apple TV. But really surprising when you think about that, reminds me a little bit of Amazon Prime. Okay, now, yes, it would be for Prime subscribers, but what they talk about here is the NFL Sunday ticket. It's coming up for grabs in 2023. Right now, DirecTV still has that. Uh, Roger Goodell has already said they're seeking more direct-to-consumer models around Sunday ticket. People say it might go for $2.5 billion. Amazon looks to be in the lead. It might go as much as $3 billion. Folks, $3 billion is not that much money to own uh, the complete NFL ticket. That's my opinion. There's nothing like the content in terms of live sports out there and the NFL, at least in uh, America, they got a lock hold on that in a big fashion. Not a lot, $3 billion, when you think about how that could change uh, the whole landscape of streaming for that platform. Thanks for starting your day with me, folks. Stay tuned. We got Basil coming up now. He did his show at 8 a.m. Live programming for the rest of the day, folks. It's going to be a great one. Stay tuned.